Hey guys, and welcome to another Game Explained discussion. I'm your host, Andre Seegers, and this time we're joined by Derek Bittner and Ash Paulson to discuss everything about the latest Kirby and the Rainbow Curse trailer. So let's get started. Alright guys, so a new trailer came out right after Christmas in Japan for Kirby and the Rainbow Curse. And, uh, you know, normally we talk about these things right away, but, you know, a lot of things were happening then being Christmas and all. So we're finally getting around to it. And, uh, and I actually just watched it, basically, for the first time before this discussion. And let me just say, this, this game looks kind of awesome. <laughs> uh, like, the claymation art style, like, to me, just stands out as being... Oh, it's just, it, it really does look great. Um, but before I go on too much about it, what, what was your guys' impression of seeing, uh, you know, seeing this game, basically, for the first time since E3? It's really sold me. I mean, I, I was already impressed with it coming uh, at E3. I thought it was a really cool concept. I love the art style. But seeing it here in this trailer and seeing all the new things they're doing with it, which we'll get into more as we go along, uh, just, like, again, really impressed me. It really seems like a step up from Canvas Curse, which I really enjoyed that game a lot on the DS. Uh, and I'm, I'm really hoping they can pull off the same sort of thing here with Rainbow Curse. Uh, I still have a few concerns with it, but overall, I am very excited for this game. Yeah, I, I was overjoyed when it was announced at E3. Uh, Kirby Canvas Curse is still one of my favorite games in the DS, as I've said before. And even though I wasn't completely sold on the claymation art style at E3, you can tell that they've really been working on it a lot over the last few months, and it looks a lot better than it did at E3. And I'm a huge fan now. I think it looks great. I'm so excited for this game. I can't even... I, I can't wait for this game. <laughs> Yeah, the claim actually art style, it, it, it's all sort of, it starts, it's like coming together now, right? But they actually did show off a cutscene as well, which gives us an even better look at how, you know, for the, for the art style that they're, you know, that they're trying to model, so to speak. <laughs> um, and it actually reminded me a bit of the new Peanuts trailer. I don't know if you guys have seen that. It's like a CG movie, but they're going for that claymation style look. And uh, it's very similar thing here. Kirby isn't like completely round in this one. He's like, he, like you almost see like the smudge marks on him, right? From like as if yeah. someone had modeled him, which, which is really cool. Um, I think the thing that uh, that strikes me about it uh, beyond, I mean, I think it looks great, but it does give me a little bit of that uh, Kirby and the uh, Kirby's Epic Yarn vibe, uh, where the art style was, you know, I did like the art style in that game too, but also kind of uh, tied into the slower pace of the game. And I know this, this game still seems a little bit slower paced than uh, than the original DS, than the original one on DS. It does definitely seem a little slower paced than than the original one. I, I do still think that, given how much the original game ramped up in difficulty, though, when you're trying to go for the medals and extra things, right. I think this game will too. Just based on some of the stuff we've seen in the trailer, it does seem like it's going to require some pretty crazy stylish dexterity to get you know all the gold medals and and various collectibles and things like that. Oh yeah, totally. And it makes sense to have a slower pace too with the uh, emphasis on multiplayer now. And they show off more of that in the trailer. And that I think that's a really actually unique idea. Um, you know, where y you actually have a platformer where people have different roles. Or at least, you know, two different sets of roles. And I, I think that's, I mean, that is, I mean, it's kind of like what they did with New Super Mario Bros. U. Just way better, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. Like it's actually central. It's just, you know, you're already, you're, they're incorporating a central part of the gameplay into the multiplayer, as opposed to New Super Mario Bros. U, where it was a completely tacked-on thing. No, it looks great. I'm, I'm very curious to see how it would actually play out, and make sure everybody, you know, can have fun doing these different roles and going through it all. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, people obviously love Bandana D. I, I, I think he's become a very popular character over the years, so it's kind of cool that everybody can control him and just work together, and... I'm curious about it. I'm not like it's not the thing that get, has me most hype about the game. Just the game in general, I think looks fun, and I love all the new things they're doing with the um, drawing mechanic. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, multiplayer, I think, does have a, you know quite a bit of potential. Yeah, no, I, I'm really excited about the addition of multiplayer to this. I guess we're calling it a series now since there are two games. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, I really want to get you know three other friends together and and try that out. I mean. I know my fiance is a huge Kirby fan, so I know we'll at least play, be playing at you know two players. But uh, I, I want to see how this game feels, or how different it feels with three other players, kind of playing alongside you. Because I feel like it could be made easier, but at the same time, you know, playing New Super Mario Brothers U or even Super Mario 3D World with three other people actually often made the game harder. So I'm curious to see if, if this is going to be similar and in, in that it actually makes it harder because there's so many different people doing different things, mm -hmm. or if it actually does. You know, make the game easier and make some of the harder stuff easier to, uh, you know, obtain. That's a good one. I didn't, uh, I didn't know it in the trailer. Do, do you guys recall if um, the Waldies interact directly with one another? Like, like, do they get in each other's ways? Or, oh, you, know, I'm, I'm looking at it now. It looks like it looks like they can't walk through each other. Yeah, it so, looks like it. So I think, so I think that uh, that I think that's basically the main thing. 
So I feel like this will make the game probably easier. Uh, which I, I I think that's a good thing, right? New Super Mario Bros. U was fun with multiple people, but at times it got really annoying getting each other's ways, especially if you had like four people running around. <laughs> and Kirby's always generally been an easier game than most other platforms that Nintendo yeah. has, so it well, makes sense to go that easier route. Yeah, I mean, the original Kirby's Dream Land was made, was designed with that in mind, where if you wanted to, you could fly through every level. You could just fly <laughs> the entire way. You know, enemies off, you know, there were very few enemies along the top of the screen. Uh, but if you wanted a greater challenge, you could just, you know, you didn't have to fly most of the time. You could just, you know, run and jump the entire way. So it was kind of cool how they handled it back then. Derek, you realize it's because you said that this game's now going to have a true arena mode that you're going to have to play <laughs> through and show everyone when it comes out, right? You know, hey, that now that you said it's going to be easy. I beat the not. last one, I'll beat this one. You know, <laughs> that, that took me forever. Yeah. Uh, but you know what? It, it, Speaking of that, there does seem to be quite a bit of challenges, as you said, the gold medals, and we saw like this, like the key, there were keychains in uh, Triple Deluxe. This one seems to have trophies, uh, which, damn, these collectibles, if they're not fun to get, like just to see them. I feel like Ash must have just been like super stoked the moment he saw that there were like trophies and other things in the game. Like, oh yeah, and like in music, and yeah, no, I, I just I love collecting things in Kirby games, and and I'm sure this one's gonna be no different. I remember that I hundred I 100 percented. Uh, Canvas Curse. So I'm sure, I mean, obviously I'm older now with less time to play games, but I'm definitely going to try to 100% uh, this one as well. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, considering how much is coming out this time of year, it's I think you'll probably have plenty of time to do that. Well, I'm uh, still working on all my 2014 games that I haven't finished, so who oh, knows? Oh, come on, 2014 was so last year. You can yeah. move on to 2015 and That's true. <laughs> so I do uh, wonder if there's like medals and everything. Like I think that could add an additional layer of difficulty to the game, or I'm, rather, I'm sure they will. So I wonder, you know, if you're just playing through the game, it might not be that that hard. But if you're actually going for everything, that might be where the difficulty kicks in. But right. If I recall correctly. Uh, playing Mass Attack, which Mass Attack, which I loved. Uh, I think if you went for everything, I think that game actually was pretty difficult. Yeah, it sure was. <laughs> right? Yeah. So. That, that's usually the case. I mean, tr Triple Deluxe on its own is not that hard. Go for everything, and you're going to get your ass kicked a bit. Right. Um, and then even even Epic Yarn, everybody complained about how easy it was. But if you were trying to get all the jewels and get to the end, yeah, it wasn't that hard compared to a lot of other games. Mm -hmm. But there was still that's where the challenge came in. Right. So it's really the collection and getting, it up, which makes it even more appealing to people like me and Ash, who enjoy collecting that stuff. And I don't mind a bit more challenge in my platformers. So it really does hit that sweet spot. Uh, I'm just curious whether what those medals will do. Like I have a feeling, like like the the keychains, the um, trophies that you collect will be completely separate from the medals. Mm -hmm. So you have to be two different aspects. So maybe the medals are just hidden throughout the levels, or. I'm not, maybe you actually use the gold medals to buy them, sort of like uh, the old slot machine uh, Turner thing in uh, Smash Brothers Melee. That might be a good question for the analysis machine to answer. <laughs> <laughs> God damn you, Andre, for mentioning that. <laughs> good segue. Right? Um, so I, I'm just looking at the trailer right now as we're talking about this, and getting back to the art style for a second, I really like how far they are going with... I mean, Nintendo does this in general, right? Like, when they take a concept... They fully embrace it. And I think I noticed it before, but it never consciously registered with me. But like, looking at, like, everything on the screen, including the HUD, like, it all looks like it's made out of clay. Like, even the meter that shows you how much, um, how much you can draw on the screen, like, it's, like, it's very, like, wiggly. Like, it's not a straight line. Like, it's made by hand as well. Um, and I love that. And, uh, and you can see that, like, even in the gameplay. Like, the idea is, like, this stuff exists, right? It's, like, these are actually clay things. So we saw in the trailer they can block off, like, Waterfalls, for instance, to allow Kirby passage, or in one of the boss fights, which look pretty cool, by the way, um, you can block his like laser beam in order to uh, get by. And I don't recall that. I don't know if that was a huge part of the original. I, I don't remember that at all. Maybe it was. It's been a long time since I played the original game. But I, I think that's really cool how they're tying that into the gameplay in some way. Even the backgrounds look like they're they're completely made of clay. Like you said, they're they're totally embracing this art style. And again, I wasn't really sold on it at E3, but I, I am now. Like it looks. You can tell they've really spent a lot of time getting the look of the game down right. It actually reminds me of that old Saturday morning cartoon, Bump in the Night. I don't know if you guys have seen that, but no. it, it was a claymation cartoon, and it reminds me of that a lot in a very good way. All right. I like the sound of that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, as you were saying, Andre, about the whole how it interacts with things more, I don't, I, like you, I don't remember uh, Canvas Curse having that much interaction yeah. uh, with your rainbow line. So it it really does seem like an evolution of that game. Uh, game and how they've taken the concept a bit further and making it a lot different. And 
I, I really am excited to see what kind of concepts we'll see them play with. Because I think, you know, we, we see quite a bit of levels in this trailer. Um, you know, even a, one of those multi-pan things where you show you, show you did like nine different levels. Um, but I still feel like there's, like, most of those are towards the beginning where they're not really showing too much off. Or they're saving a lot of the big stuff for later. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I'm, I'm very curious to see how they expand upon this and, they, like, make it a little bit more challenging or a little bit different. Because, um, you know, maybe you were blocking off waterfalls before. Guarantee that's going to be lava by the end of the game. <laughs> <laughs> that's probably a safe bet. <laughs> um, yeah, well, speaking of difficulty, actually not really, but I'm going to use that as my segue. Uh, so going off the trailer, they have one part where it zooms out and it reveals like nine different levels on the screen. And then it, it shows off that there will be like 28 in total, I think. So assuming that number is, you know, it means what we think it means, that there are only 28 levels in the game. That doesn't sound like a ton, right? Well, I, I don't know. I mean, uh, based on what I remember playing the demo at E3, the levels are actually fairly long. They are, It, it yeah. seemed like, yeah, like it, it felt like they were pretty meaty, so I'm not too concerned about it. Um, I don't know. It doesn't feel like it's going to be too short a game. Plus, I remember, even with Canvas Curse, it wasn't the longest game ever, but trying to do everything 100% took a right. lot longer. So I'm kind of getting the same vibe here. I don't think it's going to feel like too... I think it's going to be kind of like Captain Toad, right? Like, a lot of people were worried about that game's length, and I never really felt like that ended up being too short or, like, a bad value. And this is also this is going to be priced the same uh, at the same price point as Captain Toad. I oh, believe. is it? I didn't realize that. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's a quote-unquote budget title. So I think it's $40. Mm-hmm. It's interesting how Nintendo seems to be embracing that idea more and more. Yeah, and mm-hmm. I'm fine with it. Yeah, no, I'm fine with it as well. It's a great way. Like, you know, it's not quite full price game, but it's also not quite, de- uh, like, a downloadable game that you can get off the eShop. It's somewhere in between, and that seems like a good price point for it. And yeah, 28 levels uh, seems a little sh- seems a little short on, on the whole, but I don't think that bugs me at all, really, because, as you said, the levels are quite lengthy. But also, Kirby is a, like a master of replayability. If you really want to get the most out of that game and want 100% it, you're going to easily double whatever is in that game right. uh, as far as time. Uh, so, I'm, I'm really not concerned about length. I think this will be a pretty... Be a pretty meaty title for what it is uh, and yeah I'm still looking forward to seeing what it all contains and how it all works out because I don't know I'm even intrigued a little bit like the story seems as simple as all get out but it still seems like classic Kirby fare mm-hmm. like something happens uh, Kirby's re- you know Kirby's called to action by some new character let's go kick the crap out of this new character <laughs> and we'll probably end up fighting Meta Knight and DDD along the way <laughs> uh, or you can play as Meta Knight or DDD kind of by wearing face masks that you scan in using Amiibo <laughs> right and they actually they actually change Kirby's properties like they give him different powers which I think is pretty cool from what I can tell it looks like I, it looks like the Kirby Amiibo gives him like a special power that like it makes him super big and, and gives him like more powerful like a more powerful charge attack, right. whereas uh, the King DDD amiibo gives him more uh, hit points. Like I think he can take six hits instead of four or, uh, or something. Mm-hmm. But I think yeah, I think it's six instead of four. And then the Meta Knight amiibo looks like it makes uh, makes it so his charge attack goes through multiple enemies. So he's not necessarily stopped each time he hits something like he is in his regular form. Right, I see. I'll, I'll have yeah. to take a closer look at what the Kirby one does because I I remember from the demo Kirby could become super sized in that as well. Yeah, it's true he could. So I'm not exactly sure from the trailer what the Kirby one does, but I know that it highlights that ability when it's showing off the Kirby amiibo. Maybe it shows up. Maybe it uses up less of the power or something. That could be something that something like that. Um, I I will say it is, you know, it, it's nice that they're actually adding some abilities and stuff that you get from these. But if I remember from uh, Canvas Curse, you unlocked those characters as playable in that game where DDD yeah. D- 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 and Meta Knight and I believe Waddle D and they all had their own properties as well so is this our first example of content that was in the original game being locked away behind an amiibo? Uh oh <laughs> I wonder <laughs> yeah I-, I wonder if that's the case or I wonder if playing as Meta Knight and DDD D- comes with their own drawbacks and the, the amiibo lets you simply play as Kirby and still have their powers instead of having to play as them later on. That If they did that, I'd be completely fine with it. And even if they yeah. do block it away behind the Amiibo, it's, it's, it's sort of whatever. It's not like a major thing. Yeah, um, it's not like you need... Not. You know, these aren't things you need to pr- progress through the game. Right. It's just a case of like taking ga- things that were unlockables in previous game and the games and then putting them behind some kind of paywall, whatever they might... Whether it's Amiibo or DLC. Right. Um... It's you know it's it's really not a big deal. It's I'd have to see it myself in action to see decide whether or not it was worth that value or whether I you know people should feel ripped off or not. But 
on the whole, I, I'm really not bothered by it. I think it's cool that they're actually finding some way to use the Amiibos again. Um, so that that's all good. Uh, I, yeah, just overall, the game is looking quite good. I do... I, my, my one concern is still sticking around, and I mention it every time we talk about this game, is just the fact that because of the nature of the game, you got to use the stylus, and you got to use the gamepad. Yeah. This game looks gorgeous. I want to see it on my TV. I don't want to yeah. look at the damn gamepad the entire time. I know, right? <laughs> I feel like we'll all be playing as Waddle Dees, so we can play on the TV. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We'll find someone else to play as Kirby. Um, uh, who's stuck as Kirby? <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, that, that, that is true. I mean, yeah, it's something we brought up before. Uh, yeah, it, it is. It's weird. Like, it's there's no two ways about it. It is a little bit odd. Now, some people will argue you can you don't have you know you can, you can still play on the TV, but I don't I don't know how like how how possible that's going to be right like I feel yeah. like if you're I mean especially if it gets as intricate as the original Kirby Canvas Curse did, um you're going to want to, you're you're going to need to play on the gamepad I feel like. Well, actually, I just got done playing Little Inferno actually, uh, and it's it's kind of the same thing there. You're encouraged to play on the gamepad because you're using the stylus the whole time, but I actually uh, they they offer the option to use the Wii Wiimote and actually point at the TV instead, and I actually switched to that simply because I wanted to look at the game in HD, and that's, right. you know, a much lesser deal than Kirby, because this Little Inferno is not the most amazing looking game, but even there, I still wanted to look at the TV rather than the gamepad if I had the choice, so that's one drawback I definitely do. Drawback? Oh, man. <laughs> nice. But, yeah, so I, I, I don't know. It, it's kind of like I, I get that you have to use the gamepad with the stylus for this kind of game, but at the same time, like, I really do want to see this game in HD because it looks beautiful. So it, it definitely is kind of one of those things where it's, it's you know, you're damned if you do, damned if you don't. All right. Um, <laughs> if we're, if For comparison, though, real quick, I did look up how many levels there were in the original Kirby's Canvas Curse, and if my count is correct, it only had 22 levels. Oh, so, wow. Yeah, I thought it was more than that. So this one has more than that by a considerable amount, um, if my count's correct. So, yeah, 28 might be completely fine. So Yeah, that's not yeah, bad. Yeah, I'm, I'm really not too worried about the length. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not too concerned either. So Yeah. All right, well, do you guys have any final thoughts or anything else you wanted to mention about uh, Kirby and the Rainbow Curse before we wrap it up here? Yeah, I have a couple things, actually. All right, uh, wow. One, yeah, <laughs> one we were talking about before we did the discussion, how cool it is that the Animal Buddies from Kirby's Dream Land 2 and 3 are coming back. Oh, that's right. Yeah, right. they're coming back as transformations. Like, when you transform with Rick, uh, Kirby transforms into a tank. And then the game almost almost becomes like an auto-scrolling shoot-em-up type, type deal, which is really cool. And we actually got to try that at E3, or at least yeah. I did, yeah. And it, yeah. it was fun, and you can you can charge up uh, Kirby shots to, you know, do like a little cluster bomb type thing that takes out a lot of enemies, you know, in one go. Uh, and I think, I, I can't remember the name of all the animal buddies, it's been too long, but I know, uh, I think if Kirby transformed with a fish, he turns into a submarine. Coo the fish. Yep. Coo the fish, okay, yeah. yeah. So hopefully they all are making an appearance. Uh, I think all we've seen so far are Rick and Coo, but... There's only one left, isn't there? Uh, there's the owl from Kirby's Dream Land 2, but there's also three more from Kirby's Dream Land 3 uh-huh. that have made right. an appearance. Oh, that's uh, right, yeah. So I, I don't know if they'll make an appearance because I, I never found them as endearing as the original three. I didn't, yeah, I didn't either. But because with the original three, you cover land, sea, and air, and I could see them right. coming up with gameplay styles for all three. Yeah, they kind of covered it. The other thing I, I've noticed, I don't know if you guys have seen this yet, but going back to the story for a bit, or what story there is... Uh, some fans have noted that the villain this time looks or looks like it's going to be Master Hand and Crazy Hand. That or is at least they're, they're, they're two giant hands, and, and we already know that Master Hand did make a cameo appearance as a boss in Kirby and the Amazing Mirror. Right. So, yeah, it, it almost looks this time as if they're going to be the main villains, if that's actually them. Otherwise, it could just be two, you know, random giant hands. But some fans seem to think it's them. It should, I mean, it would kind of make sense, seeing as that oh, Sakurai was involved with the original game, although I don't think he's involved with this one at all. No, I don't um, think so. But it should be noted, though, that hands have always been a part of Kirby. I'm um, going back to the original Kirby's Dream Land, like when you got to the game over screen, there was like a gloved hand that would appear, and that's how you chose different options. Like, you continue, yes or no. Right, that's actually a yeah. good point. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, so, it, 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 that I mean that doesn't ruin that theory at all. It could still be related, but um, maybe it's been the same hand all this time. <laughs> <laughs> Kirby <could> continuity. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Exactly. We got some game theory stuff going on here, man. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, no, I. Well, here's the thing: is with uh, well, I forget the name of the original boss, but I remember that her sister showed up in uh, the, the main boss from uh, Canvas Curse. But I remember in uh, Triple Deluxe, her sister showed up, Paintra, mm-hmm. as one of the bosses oh, right. in, that, in, in that game. So, you know, all by all rights, um, you know, she, she should show up as well. Maybe it's her return. Maybe we got a third sister in there. Because I, I have a feeling they might try to pull it back to 
the, the you know painter the painter sisters not that that's the original one from Canvas Curse but that's the one I remember from Triple Deluxe but right. maybe that's our boss from now and it just that's what she's being represented by the hands but going off the other theory about the master hand they are pulling open a dimension we have seen them use that ability in uh, Smash Wii U yep Yes, we have. I hate the the human form of the Master Core. Hate that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I think that wraps up for us here. So thanks, guys, for watching. If you liked our discussion, make sure to like and follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Game Explain, which you can find links to in the description below. It's a good way to keep up to date on everything we post. And, of course, keep an eye on GameExplain.com for more on Kirby and the Rainbow Curse and other things gaming as well. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye.